There's only three requirements from you racers out there, okay? One, you must carry the $100 bill with you. You're going to take a $100 bill with you the entire time. If you're out of the race, you have to give up that $100. So when you surrender, this is the $100 bill you're carrying the entire race. You're gonna drop it right in there. This is gonna be for the winner, okay? So number two, make sure your bid number is visible. If you have to pull up your shirt or anything like that, that's fine. As you come across the finish line, which is right here behind you, you must show your number. The third thing is, you have one hour to complete each lap. Okay, I'm gonna open that gate over there, and it will remain open for one minute after the top of the hour. And then I close it. If I close that gate, you're out. This has anywhere from 25 to 35% grade, which is on those steps. It's five steps a platform, you know, 30 steps a platform, all these switchbacks going back and forth. None of that is easy. That's not consistent. So when it's not consistent, it's painful. 25 seconds. I tried to say that my goal was to win the race, but my record on a traditional backyard is only 21 hours, so I'm looking to improve that, and it's kind of a low bar, but I think I can get there. It's not something like this. Okay. I come into all these things with the mindset of I'm gonna win, you know what I mean? And it comes off as cocky or lacking humility, but it's just because if I come into this thing thinking anything else is an option, then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give myself an out. $10,000 is a lot of money, and I really don't like my job, so when you consider the $10,000, how much I'd have to work to make that, and I can make it in two days for doing something I'd be doing for free, easy money. You gonna make it in time? Oh yeah, you got it? Yeah. All the climbing's in the last mile, <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna take it slow, stay back here. Okay. So it's lap number five. We keep betting on how many people quit each lap. So last time it was five, so we're sticking with five more this lap. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gagging. Pace it. We're just going to do it at Christmas. Are you Justin? I was an alcoholic from, you know, the pretty much first time I drank. I fell in love with it. And uh, I got a DUI, and I was actually a police officer. I was a homicide detective, got kicked <laughs> off the force, and uh, dove into sobriety. And it was like six months into sobriety, I found ultra running. And it filled that, that kind of emptiness of wanting to be something great or, you know, doing more other than just a nine to five. It was like a, a, a therapeutic sense to being out in the mountains and um, just being in like, you know, Earth, Earth's creation, you know what I mean? Like, and, and seeing like all the, uh, I mean, I'm gonna sound crazy, but the majesticness of, of like being out in the woods alone. It's easy right now because the sun is shining, like it's the warmer part of the day. The gut check is going to be later on at night, and so I'm already like visualizing and thinking of how I'll like stay warm and manage transitions through that. You were top running, not even a little bit. <laughs> Me and one other person, that'll be a race. You don't even look like you're in, like you just look like you're wandering around the park. We're just, <laughs> yeah. I look, you look like with, you're lost. <laughs> I, know. I look like I'm home with bigger people. <laughs>
I'm David Stoltenborg and I'm currently the Nordic Backyard Ultra record holder. I think I've done eight or nine backyards in total. Uh, hopefully I'll win, but uh, just to go as far as, uh, as possible. Like if you want to make food, it's like one lap is making the food, the next one's yeah. actually eating the food, well, the well, third I, one is... I tried that and then like it's frozen. Uh, not in a hurry right now, it's only lap seven or eight or nine or something. So yeah, let's see what happens tomorrow. The race starts tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Feel it fresh, change the clothes, change the attitude. We lost 13 people in two laps. Everyone that approached up here all looked fresh, all looked like they were going to do fine. And then all of a sudden, it was like that lap was a virus. I don't know what happened at that last lap. Whatever it takes, but don't stop moving. If you stop, you're going to die. coldest place on this course is right there in the corral and so I'd put a blanket on and she had a heated jacket and she'd open it and I'd stick my hands into her heated jacket and she would hug me yeah. Josh you're still you're still making it are you We're still in fight okay yeah just one more one more loop at a time okay man Settling into somewhat of a rhythm. It would be kind of cool to see the sunrise. It's coming. Ten seconds. Okay. Here we go. Good job, fellas. Another hour. I don't want to disappoint anyone, but I am going to do exactly what I'm going to do. My, my pace is degrading to the point that. Yes. If you do one more loop, go out on loop 25, because it's going to be light uh, there, and it gives you so much energy, I promise. Just don't quit, just go out and see what happens. If you come back after one hour and ten minutes, it doesn't matter.
Daylight, y'all good. Yep. I think two of us are gonna get together. It's gonna be 125, maybe worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think it's ever seen, but I, I came in with a mission and that was to honor my dad's memory, and I gave him a full 24-hour day. So awesome. I gave what I had, and I, I left everything on the field. I'm, I'm. I'm happy and, and I'm happy for everyone who gets to continue on in day number two. This was a fantastic experience. Hey, you're gonna win and I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm excited for you. I'm proud of you. Done, Hunter. You're gonna win and I'm gonna you're win. Done. I'm excited what? for you. What? Yeah, bro. Okay. Dude. I got another one. What are you done with? Huh? You done now? Yeah. No, why? What's going on? So around uh, hour 12, I started comparing my fitness to some other guys out there and how they were breathing on climbs and talking. And then around hour 19, I was convinced I couldn't win. And then it turned into more of how far can I go? How it became a personal goal of just to see how far I could take myself. You can go one more lap. Just pound the downhill some more, dude. You know you got it in you. I don't. You just have to snap at it with the sun coming up, bro. Come on. Fuck, you're standing here, man. You can do it. Come on. Just pound the downhills. You'll snap out of it soon. Everybody's feeling weak right now, man. I ain't feeling weak, homie. I'm feeling hyperthermic. Oh, shit. Fucked up. You got it, bud. Hello. No, he'd be at the bottom of this fucking hill. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hunter fucking made me go out, and I don't even have food. My water's been frozen for a fucking two hours. All right. I know. We're, We're coming. coming. We're coming. <sighs> what is the? What was the lowest temp last night? Do you know? I know you're sleeping. I think it was like six degrees. Justin came up to me, probably a few loops ago. He was like. This really makes Mid-State look like a bitch because it's rough. It's a rough race. Yeah. Proud of you, dude. <laughs> Around hour 20, I was completely soaked. Everything was frozen. Like, I had smart wool on, but it was all frozen. And I came in and I took it off. I was bare chested. I put a, just a puffy jacket on, put goose in my pocket, and I went out for another four loops. Not thinking I could do another step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, everything's freezing. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, my best wasn't good enough today, man. And I have no regrets. You know, I came out here to win, and I gave it my all. And and I went as far as I possibly could go. And I know I didn't have anything left to give. Um, I went out on loop 25. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was, you know, I couldn't make the time cut off. She's like, yeah, I know you just ran for 24 hours in fucking sub-freezing temperatures, but now you need to pack up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, y'all are cruising, dude. Keep that shit up. Shivering. Let's go! <laughs> David's going again. Going again, David. stubborn group of people we got. I think it's gonna go pretty far. I'm definitely thinking nighttime. I don't think any of these guys are giving up before then. David, his first quarter mile was literally like 430 pace. He gapped us by like 100 meters. He gave us a high five about uh, two laps ago and I could see it in his eyes. I'm like, oh crap, he is, he's like regretting it. I could just see it. I was like, oh no, he's not recovering. I had to uh, crew myself. Uh, so uh, all my food and all my drinks were like almost frozen. So uh, it was so cold to get down your throat uh, and in your stomach. And uh, my stomach was hurting and uh, my head was hurting. I think I got too much sun. So it was like everything was hurting uh, at the end. Thanks for the help. Of course. We are I feel like one right now. You are one. You're everyone's hero. Trust me, there's a lot of people that can't even, can't even think about doing it. Oh, I got him. Thanks. There goes the devil Telling me to lie again But his arm around me Says it's alright to pretend Come there. <laughs> I think he's sorry. That you can get more than you give. Watch out. Get a little bit. Get it, Brian. And he wears a raincoat that celebrities have autographed. Because they're working for him on his secret special staff. That's a throwback. He gets a couple more sent to him every week. God, I hate to say I'm sorry, but I just wanted you to love me, even though I still love money. Uh, I just can't climb, I can't see him, can't do shit. 32,000 feet of climbing. 6,000 foot VR. Like 108 and a half. The PR Valley. That's yep. say by about seven miles. Oh, I mean, I won't lie. I'd rather have the ten thousand dollars. I need more money. Oh, we thought that it was going to be an eight-hour. It was going to be hard enough to be an eight-hour race. I didn't. I did not think that. I don't know what you guys. Because <laughs> at one point, I thought. I thought, it was, I thought it's twenty-four hours to thirty. Maybe. I have a feel like we could go on for another twenty hours. Ever since yeah, you bought it. that so, suit and tie, you look nice. Dear God, I hate to say. Just stay to work harder. Just work harder and. Sounds mentally there. Oh. Now it's ninety seven hundred dollars in there. Get in there. Even though I still love money. And dear God, I hate to turn the table. But I just hate waiting oh. table. For one That's it. Need more money. Oh my gosh. You know, every athlete in the world wants to push their own limits. They want to, it's their own demon inside of them that they want to conquer. It's not necessarily the race. It's not necessarily about winning the $10,000. It's a personal achievement. It's something they want to solve themselves. They may be going through a struggle. They may have some difficult times in their lives. And this is the race that allow them to do that. It is not going to be easy. It's absolutely going to be the hardest thing, I think, that any ultra runner has ever done. I'm more proud of this than races I've won. Good. 
just just because of the places I went in the pain cave, and like telling myself that I wasn't going to stop short of what would constitute victory for my goals. Well, and I will get that medal tattooed, and it will say did not win on it. I promise. Not winning allowed me to take a step back and really look at myself um, and see what I can fix. I've always been worried about the heat. It's always been my nemesis. But the cold is just a whole different monster. Yeah, I'd love to be back. Uh, hopefully it was, it's going to be uh, not that cold. But uh, if I will be back, it will be with a crew member, definitely. We learned so much during this. Um, we're excited to hopefully come back next year. They have this again.